Uh, Luke, we're looking at a at a photo here uh, from your fourth tour in um, in Afghanistan, and the names are uh, the last names are Patterson, Hawkins, Moreno. Is it Moreno? Or Moreno. Moreno. Yeah. Moreno. Yeah. And Peters. And when you look at that, when you look at that photo, what what comes to mind? Uh, just the memories I have with those people. I think, you know, uh, Patterson. You know, I think of a good young ranger, solid dude, uh, you know, closer to age in me than probably most of the newer guys. Um, and good, smart guy. I remember him and a couple other friends of mine, including Patrick Hawkins, uh, you know, exploring caves, uh, up around in the Georgia area that we had found. Um, mm -hmm. I think of after he had died, his, his sisters were just awesome. Um, good mm -hmm. people. Um, you know, I think of, uh, yeah, you know, Pat Hawkins, you know, I, I go way back, I went, you know, I go way back with him, he, he's, you know, I have a ton of memories with him, you know, we, we were, uh, I've never been on a mission without him, you know, that was our, I, our first mission was that, we kind of coincidentally, like, you know, in the military, you move around a bit, in special operations, you move around yeah. a lot less, you can spend 20 years in Fort Benning, um, but, you know, minus deployments, but, sure. um, we actually even coincidentally were in like the same squad for probably 80% of the time, just wow. cause, um, you know, uh, the last deployment we weren't in the same squad, but ton of memories, you know, partying in Atlanta, hanging out. We got, we were roommates as well, you know, on deployments, you know, you see each other more time, more often than you would see like your, you know, spouse or something if you're, cause you're literally, we're roommates on deployment too. So wow. you're, uh, you know, you're sleeping in the same room and then you're going to, you know, like the rain room or, you know, playing video games or working out together. I'd work with yeah. my workout buddy. Uh, wow. Um, and then, uh, you know, so a lot of memories. Yeah. Jenny Jenny and Joe, uh, Jenny Moreno and Joe Peters, uh, I, I met them on that deployment, so I knew them for about a month. Uh, Jenny, you know, I remember... Uh, I hung out with her a couple times, um, you know, and you go, go on mission with her and, you know, say hi, like, you know, banter and, you know, and talk about whatever. Uh, and she was a nurse? She was, a, so she was a nurse by, by MOS, by trade, basically, um, but she opted for the, the female special operations unit, which is CST, and they basically, oh, okay. when we hit a target, they come in, especially in an Islamic country, um, women and children are going to be infinitely more inclined to talk to her than they would be to talk to even our interpreters, so... You know, uh, interpreters might be there, but they're talking to her. So, uh, they so, can, so um, did she have on the helmet, or did she have on a head? No, she had just helmet. She just okay. uh, pretty much looked as she did there, and uh, yeah. she would. But so she opted for that yeah. position. Any anybody can from any MOS, any job in the army can try out for that. I think. I don't know what their specifications are, but nurse yeah. is apparently acceptable. So she's yeah. great, though. She's really yeah. good at her job. Yeah. Uh, you know, you never worry about her being able to keep up or anything like that. But. Okay. Uh, and then Joe Peters, he, uh, I, I knew him uh, for that month because he really helped me out with a, um, uh, a part of the mission that uh, I can't really talk about, but basically mm -hmm. a, tech, a very technical, kind of boring part of the mission that was after the assault that we have to do um, yeah. with like computer stuff. But uh, he was yeah. really good at it and he would come out with us like most of the missions. Um, and when he did, uh, it was a lot easier, so I, I was interacting with him a lot on mission, yeah. and right after a mission, when we were doing debriefings and stuff, he was a cool guy. Yeah. Um, so I, I think of those memories. Sure. So we, we, we have the picture there, and, and then something you wrote, so this is a particular mission, four killed in action, so Pat, Cody, Jenny, and Joe, 23 wounded, then you write, eyes and body, Tom Block, meaning, what, what were those? Tom things? was my, like fellow team leader. I was yeah. one team leader. He was the other guy in my squad. Yeah. He, uh, we thought he lost all, both of his eyes, but he lost one eye, uh, got his like face hurt, uh, leg broken real bad. Mm -hmm. Um, some other, you know, ton of shrapnel, stuff like that. Um, mostly facial trauma. Um, yeah. you know, wow. uh, he's right now, his fake eye, instead of an iris, he has a Captain America shield. <laughs> Uh, and you know now he's married. He's got a kid. Now, does he have to uh, keep that forever, or can they change that? Down they can change it. Yeah, they can change case, it. <laughs> in case there's a change in mind. Yeah, he hasn't changed it in a few years though. So. And then amputees. You write Josh. Is it Hargis? Mm -hmm. And Kyle Emmons. Mm -hmm. Is that right? Yep. And Josh lost one leg. Is that right? Two legs, and Kyle Two lost legs. one leg. Yeah. Jeez. Yep. So. 
No, is this this is the last mission. This is your very last mission. In that that was, yeah, I didn't know it was gonna be my last one. I was supposed to stay for the whole deployment. But, but I, in what you wrote is that you had TBI. Is that what was that? Um, traumatic brain traumatic injury. brain injury. Yeah, that's from this the same mission. Yeah. So, yeah. long story short, essentially like thirteen explosives went off. We got caught in a really bad the IED improvised explosive device. Uh, ambush very complex very like super uh effective on their part um so uh you know we got hit really hard um and you know being around that many explosions tbis are not they're an emerging science more emerging than even ptsd uh there's a lot of overlap yeah because uh you know if i hit you on the head with a baseball bat you can be sure that you got hit with this part on this part of your brain and like I guess brain might hit the other side and this part can get hurt yeah. uh, and this part of the brain does something this part of the brain does something you can narrow that a blast goes through your brain so wow. pressure goes through you so it's really hard to pinpoint like all where what got damaged and how it got damaged and yeah. you can have behavioral issues 10 years down the line you can have all sorts of stuff They're only, they've only been collecting data on it for the last you know I don't I don't know what exactly the numbers 20 30 years so do you have any um, do you experience any things that you can attribute to the, the traumatic mm -hmm. brain injury? For a while, I had short-term memory loss uh, problems. Um, you know, when you're when you walk into a room and you like forget what you're doing there, or yeah. like you're talking to someone and you're kind of like, "What was I saying again?" Yeah. It was like that. But I might be having a convers an engaged conversation like this, yeah. and halfway through the sentence, I completely forget what we're talking about. Wow. So I'd be like, which is kind of frustrating. Most yeah. of the people I was around knew, you know. Um, a lot of rangers have been wounded in combat before, so they like are pretty accommodating yeah. with that stuff. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I was, I got asked to be Patrick's because he was my best friend. So I got asked to be Patrick's escort to escort his body back to America. So when I yeah. did that, I could have stayed in country and and you know, back then I wish that I, I wanted to. Uh, I wish that I would have stayed. Now I'm glad I I went back with him. But uh, back then I wanted to go. Uh, I tried to go back. But because I left, I was then had to go through a test, and I was deemed non deployable. Oh. There were guys that got worse TBIs than me that stayed and just recovered for a bit, and then they could go back out. But uh, because I was, I, I left the country. I tried to come back in like a few weeks later, a month later. Why did you want to stay initially? I mean, there's a, there's like I can't do anything for for the dead guys. There's a lot of living people that I can do something for, you mm. know. Um, and they're still mm. my friends, and they're going out yeah. on missions. And, they did. They had a pretty slow deployment after that. They went on a lot of missions, but they didn't. I don't even know if they had a fire, any firefights after that. But like, they were. I mean, the whole platoon was knocked out for a period of time because you know you just non-mission like capable sure. with twenty-three wounded guys. Uh, but yeah. you know, after a while, they pulled from other platoons and got enough people to get us stood up again. And uh, mm -hmm. but they didn't. Yeah. They didn't end up doing a whole lot anyway. So well. And I was glad to go back to be able to go back and bury my friend. So now I'm glad that I did that. Yeah, yeah. You, if I remember correctly, you went to you were able to go to Patrick's funeral, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Cody's, you weren't able to go to. That was in Oregon. No. Yeah. Um, I Jenny's it. Jenny's service was in San Francisco, and then I don't know about Peter's. I don't, I don't yeah, know. I don't know. The only thing I knew that really was that where Patrick's was, and I was just trying to like care of his family and he was your he was your buddy from the beginning yeah pretty close to the beginning of your army time mm -hmm. well um you know if, if you can i mean just walk us through this mission you talked about um a minefield basically that for them worked out pretty well and i mean so now in a different discussion you said that you know i, I think you were referring to this mission that you didn't have a sense going into it that it was going to be a tough mission so could you just kind of take us from the beginning and just kind of walk us through what? We what rarely do this, but we were actually doing what's called a split ship, split ship infill, which means that we were like, each helicopter went to a different mission. I mean, they were like really close to each other, but they were like, that's how, you know, like much we thought we weren't going to do get into any fights. Uh, the risk factor was very, very low. Um, so far as you knew. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and yeah. and they did their. I mean, people did their research. There's no one on mm -hmm. our end to blame. I, I would I wouldn't blame anyone on our end for that. Yeah. Um, not mm -hmm. not with the information that was available and the tools available to us. Uh, so we went and well, and thank God more people weren't there just because the nature of the fight that we got in. Um, but so we landed 
and there was a guy sleeping outside. And so I was on a, on a, uh, a team called the squirter interdiction team, which means that if a dude runs off, um, you know, it was my job to go chase him down. And we, again, that was one of the jobs that we all squads took turns with, uh, or yeah, our team basically took, took, took turns with. So that was my yeah. job. So, but this guy was sleeping outside. We were landing pretty much a lot of times we land far away so they can't hear us when we walk in, but this yeah. time we're landing right, right on top of them. And when that, when you do that, you know, the guy's going to run. It doesn't mean he's bad. It's like, if you're sleeping outside cause it's hot, you know, yeah. and a helicopter lands on you, you're going to like run away. Yeah, right. yeah, <laughs> so, so we chase this guy, uh, across, you know, that like that, you know, field and it, it so actually mines isn't quite accurate it's uh there were a bunch of pressure plate ieds and they're oh, laid right, throughout right. the field difference okay. being is that mines are mechanically activated okay. um these are electronically activated and they just weren't plugged in so they could do whatever they want and we wouldn't be able to tell if we we're watching them from you know you know sky right. and, you know right. you're um they're walking all over the place so that you know uh you can never be 100 percent certain but you know it's um and so I, you know, me and my team chase this guy across that whole field, you know, just, you know, not, not aware like, that there are IDs all over the place. Yeah. Thing. Stepping on them, whatever. Yeah. Uh, um, so we're taking off this in the middle of the night, not none of the day. So, uh, take off this dude goes into like this old West ambush alleyway valley type thing, you know? And, uh, um, I was worried. I immediately, as he like is running into this specific place, I'm like, some guys are going to come up over the top. Yeah, exactly. So we had a couple of our leadership who were kind of tailing behind us, kind of coordinating with us since we're separating from the main element. And uh, they were like, we'll just pop up top since it was pretty flat up there and we'll just watch your guys' back as you keep going. So we kept going. And, and while the other element simultaneously is moving in on a single building, which is atypical with Afghanistan, usually you have a compound, it's like outer walls, and then their houses, you have like a bunch of buildings and like a courtyard in the middle. Yeah. This was just kind of a, a weird building standalone. Um, mm. So they surrounded the building like we do, and you basically start calling calling them out. You know, we didn't enter and clear. Um, we are like, come out. You know, we have you surrounded, that type of thing. Uh, then when they hear that, we're in place around the building. They basically, then they plug in the pressure plates. Um, so you're in, so you're basically, then you're in all of a sudden in the middle of the minefield. You're not, at the edge of one and one guy gets hit and you go back it's like all of your guys are in the middle of one now so pretty uh like you know pretty tactically like you know effective idea um so, so this kind of led you led you into that field no, yeah or, we just ran across it so he led us into something it. else he led us into a separate ambush uh but oh, right. so these guys were there and then they had, they're coming out. They don't know they're there. No one happened to be standing on any of them then. They're just around them, you know? And like, uh, um, so they keep going and I'm chasing this guy. And then there's a bunch of bushes ahead of me. And this guy just like, it's kind of going in the, goes into the bushes. And I'm like, okay, I'm, I don't have to really worry about up there so much anymore. And I don't know this guy's bad. You know, I, you know, it, it wasn't a high profile mission. It was like, whatever. And, um, you know, but you're ready. Like you always are. And, uh, trying to see in with my IR laser and you have an IR floodlight. So it's like a, they can't see it, but you can like, it's you have, yeah, so you yeah. have the dot in the middle and then you have a floodlight, which is like a infrared flashlight. So yeah. you, the, and the dots in the middle of it. So yeah. you can see, you know, like, like you're using a flashlight, but they can't see it. So, you know, mm -hmm. um, it's surreal, you know, you have like all these infrared stuff going on and then you like take off your radio like earphones and you look up your nods and it's just pitch black and quiet <laughs> yeah, uh, wow. and uh and when but what you can see is that greenish color yep is it's that, green okay the green screen, yep. yeah yeah most people i think use green i think russians use red now but anyway okay. so we're we're like doing all this stuff and uh like i saw a weapon um pretty sure i saw a weapon you know uh and then you know about to try to like figure out what was going on with that because that's you know serious but you know uh uh, I'm not going to shoot somebody just because I saw some metal in some bushes, you know? So yeah. like, um, then from there, I mean, while I was doing that, Josh Hargis was next to me. He had, uh, the dog, a military working dog, Yanni, uh, mm -hmm. with him. And, you know, because they're going to go with us because for any runners, uh, you're going to get, you're, you know, the dog, nobody, I can't, nobody's going to run as fast as the dog is. So, right. um, 
the dog can take him down non-lethally. Uh, you know, dogs, the dogs aren't going to kill anybody. They're going to mess up their like bicep or something. But, yeah. uh, so he's ready with the dog. And then basically a woman had come out of the compound and Tom Block was, was dealing with her and she was wearing a suicide vest under her stuff. And she blew her, she blew up, she blew herself up. And so basically I'm in a situation where, uh, all I hear, there's an explosion behind me. At the you know there's the opening mouth it's of the, the woman blowing up and yeah. yeah so I don't know if we're taking contact from behind us but we have people in front of us uh, you know I don't know if it's good to say but my squad leader, squad leader used to call it like a Polish ambush where two mm. people ambush and shooting in the middle yeah. and I guess you mm. shoot each other yeah just because it's stupid doesn't mean that they won't do it so like yeah. you know and yeah. it, it kind of also puts you in a bad position because you can't shoot in two directions at once mm. so yeah. like. You know, uh, and, you know, we haven't quite got to the level of dual wielding yet. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, but so Josh had the very ingenious idea or fast tactical decision making idea that we were kind of talking about in the other video. Yeah. Of, uh, so, uh, you know, you basically how you deal with that stuff is you just deal with the, the most obvious threat that's right in front of your face, which is the thing actually exploding. So, like, you know, so immediately turn around, Josh lets go of the dog. So the dog can take care of and pacify these guys while at least we figure out in that series, in that, you know, four to five second moment, yeah. he can let the dog deal with them while we figure out what's behind us. So he lets the dog go still as I'm turning, the dog explodes like right in front of us. So the, the, the dog, uh, some people will say that he jumped on the dog and, or jumped on the guy and he had a suicide vest on and he uh, blew himself up. Uh, I'm pretty sure the dog hit a tripwire, um, really close to me and, and my, the new guy that was next to me. Um, uh, this was his first, uh, mission where we actually had like combat too. Uh, wow. and, uh, not his first mission, but his first one like that. And then, uh, yeah. And, uh, that exploded and I don't really remember, I think I got lifted off my feet. I landed on my feet. Uh, you know, so the um, thing blew you off your feet, but then you landed back. Yeah, 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 and whatever. I think they their idea was that one of us hit it, and when the dust settled and they could see again, uh, we would uh, they would like start shooting when they could see what they're engaging. Um, but we we're just way faster than them. It's because like you know we didn't die because the dog got you know like hit instead. The dog took it and down. yeah, we're just faster than them in, in general. Yeah. And so we opened up on them immediately. You know. You know, so there was more seconds. than one in the bush then. There's I, a guy I, who ran yeah. into the bush and then... Right. So yeah. um, the operating agreement is that there... Or the thing that people are going by is that there's three of them. Okay. Well, including the guy that went in. So two that he went up with. But. So you opened up on them. Yeah, they were, they were done. done. And then mm -hmm. you don't want to... Especially if it wasn't tripwire, I don't want to clear through those guys. So we just popped up to the top. Um, and then, you know, so they were done. And, uh, um, and then there's more explosions going on at the compound. So what had happened is the first suicide bomber went off. People knew it was a suicide bomber. No one was dead yet. Tom was really hurt bad. Uh, we had another guy that was unconscious. And I think there was one of the medics was unconscious too, but he wasn't like, you know, I think he had some TBI stuff later, but as far as operationally, he could still function once he woke up. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, so people are like, okay, you have a suicide bomber. There, there's no real like concern yet for like stepping on something, because like that's not really the threat, you know. Uh, if you're in a firefight with someone, they're shooting at you. You're not like walking around worrying where you're gonna step. You're gonna deal with the threat that's presenting itself. So people weren't super concerned about IEDs yet, um, and that's when Patrick and Cody they were going to treat casualties, and they got they stepped on ones and they got killed, and then. Mm -hmm. uh, um, it kind of gets like the information kind of gets like blurry in my mind or blurry in like, uh, you know, how people retell it. I'm sure if you ask people, I'm sure if you ask someone who's on the same mission, uh, some of the details will be different. Uh, that's how it always goes with these things. But, yeah. uh, so I'm, we're running back. I didn't know if they're getting mortared or what they're doing. So we're running back to see what's going on. And if they're getting mortared, basically to take out the mortar position immediately, you know, try to figure out where it is and go and just take them out. Uh, that wasn't what was happening. Um, so we ran in, uh, oh, Josh, Josh Hargis got, he found half of Yanni and he had, Josh had an American flag on his back that he took on deployments. 
and so he wrapped him up and, and carried the the bits that he could get um oh, the dog the dog yeah and uh so and then we went back yeah. uh and you know i just i was with the, the eod guy who was with us um and i was like dude just like get clear back which not not like clear for enemies clear for ids as fast as you safely can like we got to get back to these guys because we're just, you know, hearing like a couple of explosions and stuff and when we get back, we just basically run right into the middle of the minefield uh, because we didn't like know really what was going on. Not in the middle of it, but kind of you know still in it. And uh, um, then uh, Josh got hit. That's when Josh got hit. You know, he lost both his legs. Um, and uh, um, so I mean, his wounds had nothing to do with really when he saved my life and you know Zach's life, the other guy, probably his own life. Uh, um, the dog, though. Yeah. Yeah. And. Uh, but yeah, so he got, he got hit and then, uh, um, you know, from there, like Jenny wasn't, wasn't a command element, but she's a nurse by trade. So she, she knows, you know, when, and that many casualties, you're getting shot from everywhere and all sorts of stuff. Guys like, you know, a couple guys screaming, uh, cause they're hurt real bad. One guy had like a thousand pieces of shrapnel on his side and he had like a pretty broken leg and, um, you know, you have really hurt guys and like. She's a nurse and she's one of us, uh, absolutely. You know, she's not a ranger, but then she's definitely one of us. And, uh, you know, so she ran in and uh, she was she was killed and Joe was killed. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, what you're supposed to do is one guy gets hit by an IED and you freeze, you don't move. Uh, but because of the initial confusion that wasn't an IED, uh, people didn't know because we came in, we didn't know that's what Josh got hit. Um, you know, and like, uh, uh, some body parts that set off stuff so you can't even like I mean you can be you can freeze but if someone gets blown up and their torso lands on another one then that's gonna blow up and hurt more people people got blown all over the place and then uh, eventually we were able to stabilize what we had so we were just treating casualties and we were just stopped like not moving and we knew what was going on and uh, you know and we're in a bad situation all the bad guys are dead you know long gone but like we, knew, I, we were watching for a counterattack or something, but like, um, how, so, many, how many of them were they? Were there? Um, roughly, I think like there was a three out that I was with. I, I don't remember. I, I didn't like. I wasn't looking at yeah. them coming out. There was yeah. a, a woman. There was a man, and then I think there was another man. Uh, so the, I mean, so these casualties, these numbers you get: four killed in action, twenty-three wounded, some very significant wounds. This is mostly or completely the result of the, the woman with the suicide vest and the IEDs. All the deaths were because of the IEDs. The woman with the suicide vest hurt Tom really bad and a couple other people, but there was no uh, kill in action. So uh, this, maybe you can't answer this, but this must have been a high value place. I mean, if they're putting all this energy into putting IEDs all around the place. Uh, yeah, um, you know, probably, I mean, without getting into it too much, just just uh, very patient people. I mean, patience in warfare, especially guerrilla warfare, can get you far. Because yeah. you can set something up and just like send out a signal, come get me, for years, you know, and maybe nobody really cares because it's not that big of a deal. But then oh, when somebody does, you yeah. know. Uh, but yeah, um, and then, you know, we had EOD, we had QRF come in uh, eventually. What's QRF? Uh, quick Reaction Force. Okay. So uh, anytime you go out, you have another so back special back operations uh, group ready to come get you. And ours okay. happened to be our sister platoon, another group. How long did it take for them to get there? Uh, I don't remember. Uh, okay. Prime was like, sure. you know, probably like, I'd guess like 45 minutes um, from, from, landing on the ground, from landing on the ground. So, you yeah. know, uh, maybe it's less, 30 minutes. But This whole incident... Uh, Roughly 15, 20 minutes? Um, yeah, well, from the beginning. And then we're stuck in the field, and then we have the explosive guys clearing from person to person, essentially. The problem is the IEDs, I think they were made out of graphite, so they didn't really pick up on metal detectors too well. So that's when the QRF landed. Kyle Emmons was on the QRF, and uh, I was actually gone with the cat. I took the cat some casualties out, and uh, um, he had hit another one just because they're hard to detect. One of the EOD guys stepped on one but a low warded which means it just fizzled uh you know these are the guys who come in and disable these IDs yeah and so on. yeah so we yeah we had uh we had a, a guy with us that was already he was with me for most of it but yeah. he was with us at the beginning and then we, they had two other when they knew what was going on they're like you know both the eod guys would get with us you know yeah. and like they brought him 
we ran out of, uh, you know, like uh, Skedco's, which was essentially stretchers. We ran out of stretchers, so we were carrying body parts that we could find with American flags that we had on our backs. Or some, I didn't have one, but some guys, a bunch of guys had them. So we were finding, uh, you know, and that was quite the image. I carried, I helped carry Josh Argus off target. So, you know, EOD clears the path and you just hope that it's good and you just kind of... Did they, did they, were they carrying the flags for that reason? No. No, people like to have just like a flag that they bunch, they, they like get really tight in there and then they take it with them on every deployment and then when they get out, it's a cool thing to hang up. And, uh, but, um, did that incident change how you, when you just see a flag randomly flying, does that sometimes I think kind of change your, I think maybe I think more of, uh, one of these pictures and more of the, the coffins. Um, Mm -hmm. but it was a powerful image to be on the back of a helicopter and to see like really some strong people pretty shaken and like blood all over the back of the helicopter and like American flags with like, you know, uh, bodies in them literally, you know, just kind of like, cause we just mm. grabbed the flag and that was a pretty powerful image, I think. And, uh, trying to, you know, just making sure, you know, trying to help Josh as much as I could cause he was the guy that was yeah. happened to be carrying out. Um, <clears throat> well, I mean, you, you wrote this and, and something you said and Patrick was your buddy going back going back a long way. Well, here's one thing you wrote. Um, That's when I knew Patrick and Cody were dead, um, but I didn't let it bother me. We were to help the living. We could worry about the dead later. We kept moving. Um, You know, when you get that info, of course, whenever any one of your fellow soldiers is killed, that's a big deal, but you know, Patrick is a, is a friend of yours. I've seen a small number of probably many, many, many photos you have where you and Patrick are together. So you get that word, you find out somehow that Patrick is, is, is killed. So, I mean, what is that? You just, you, the, in, the information registers. I mean, is it like a conscious thing that I can't, I'm not going to think about that right now. I just got to keep, Some, keep moving. Sometimes I think, uh, like, uh, yeah, because I was I had stopped when I came back in, mm. and I could see Patrick's squad leader standing there. He was like, I heard him over the radio. He was not not totally with it because he was he'd been hit and I had real real hard. Uh, but you know he was still operating and co- coherent enough to do stuff. But you know he was definitely a little bit on autopilot and mm. uh, um, um, because of the physical trauma and whatnot, yeah. not necessarily the emotional stuff. But nobody freaked out. I mean that's. You know, the one guy who was screaming was because he had, you know, a million pieces of shrapnel on him. But like, wow. um, and that goes back to training and it, you know, and uh, uh, having that to fall back on. But anyway, yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, you just, you just, you just push it, push it away. I remember I just, just concentrated on taking care of my guy who was with me. So we were split, and my team was just me and one guy basically at that, in that mission. It was a smaller mission, so I was just take care of my guy and I asked him if he was good probably like a hundred times <laughs> I was mm. like you good man you good you good yeah uh, and he asked you know he was like yeah I'm good he was like you good I was like yeah I'm all right you know and like, back and forth. you just have to like yeah and, and when I got back uh accountability is really important you know you know military equipment accountability is just like you know it's which I mean for good reason obviously yeah. but like you know and we we like you know I did same thing with that I knew I knew it was coming I knew it was coming. I was going to break down, but I was, I was just like, you know, I have to like do this stuff now. Uh, and you know, I went back, got accountability, weapons and equipment, you know, this whole squad's leadership is just gone. So it's just the newer guys. And you know, I was tasked with basically making sure that like, okay, how many guns do we have? You know, uh, how many gun, operational guns do we have? You know, and what's gone, you know, uh, when I was in the HLZ, which was pretty far away, I found like a, a the bolt to a weapon just on the ground because it just got blown way out there. Um, you know, and like just all the equipment is just, you know, a nightmare to imagine, but I happen to be good with like, you know, Excel sheets. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so I was yeah. sitting there and that's essentially the same thing. Just like serial numbers, boom, 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 boom. When we got back and I mean, collecting the gear from, yeah, the, from yeah. the site and account, trying to account for everything. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, I've sweat and, and some blood on me and everything, but you just keep going until everything's done. It doesn't matter if you're back. You know, we went back, we heard there was another casualty and it was, it was Emmons. And uh, a couple other guys got shrapnel wounds. They ended up making four recoveries, but uh, um, 
you know, I didn't know, I, you know, I didn't know would die. They were a sister platoon. I didn't know if someone died in that last explosion. Uh, yeah. you know, and, uh, somebody had said one of our, uh, one of the gun team leaders who didn't die, who just, he just got a big chunk taken out of his leg. He ended up being right. Um, somebody said that he had died and like, you know, and, and all the, we didn't, I didn't know how many people had died. I knew Patrick and, and Cody had died. And I think I knew that, um, Jenny had died. Uh, but, Real quickly, as soon as the information got in, our leadership like pulled us all in. And was like, these are the casualties. These are the you know just the, so everyone knows. And but it wasn't until after that and after all the equipment was accounted for that I just broke down and cried and you know uh, cried once, cried again once in Germany on the way back. And um, I'm not a big crier. I haven't cried since you know I'm a pretty like emotionally open person, but for some reason I don't cry a whole bunch. But I did then. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, I, cr- I cried and then uh, uh, this guy that used to work for me that had gone gone up a little bit. Yeah. He came up to me. Have you ever seen the movie Zombie Land? No. He was like, he was like, man, he was like, uh, I haven't cried that hard since the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, it's just funny. I mean, I, I I laughed too. Then I mean, it's just like, you wow. know, you just make it. You know, you that's the type of the type of mentality you gotta have to to do that kind of yeah. stuff. And yeah. And then you just get on with it, you know, and uh, do what you got to do. Um, Let's just, let me just put some pictures in front of you and, and um, just describe the picture to us real quick and then just, just tell us what, what goes through your mind. That was when Josh got awarded his Purple Heart. Uh, I, I don't remember where he was. He may have been in uh, Kandahar or Germany or something, but uh, that was a big viral picture that went everywhere. Um, they didn't know he was awake. They didn't when he was awarding him. They thought he was intubated. They thought he was like you know totally gone. And yeah. he, as they were doing it, he managed to do a salute. And then the, whoever awarded the officer that awarded it to him said it was the most profound thing that he'd ever seen in the military. And you know he still regards it as that. Laying in the hospital bed, and then he's able to pull his hand out. Well, this guy's giving a him a salute. You know, I mean, uh, wow. you know, and it's little moments like that. When I was in the hospital, seeing who was still alive, you know, and like or seeing how bad the wounded guys were. Um, I, I, uh, two drone operators came up to me that were our drone guys. I've never, I've never seen them in my life. Uh, and just cause we happened to be in Canada, it was a big hub. And, uh, yeah. They were just like, Hey man, like really appreciate like everything that you guys do down there. And you guys got, you know, you guys are like, just like, you know, it's, it's an honor to, to have like watched over you guys and, and, and worked with you guys. And mm-hmm. that meant a lot to me. I have no idea who they are and I'd love to find them someday. They just. Walked up to me in the hospital. I was just sitting in the hallway. It was, you know, I guess I probably had some blood on this me. This is in the states. This is in Canada. Oh, oh so Canada. Right before right, I left, yeah, they, yeah. The, yeah, I got I got yeah. told or not told. I got asked if I wanted to be the escort when I was in the hospital. Uh, mostly checking on. I wasn't there for myself. Yeah. I was on guys, yeah. So these are drones. These are uh, the drones with the missiles, or just drones for surveillance, or uh, depends. Yeah. Depends, yeah. depends on the mission, yeah. but generally surveillance. Yeah. Yeah. So here's a. Here's a photo of, is it Yanni? Mm-hmm. Yanni. So, what comes to mind there? Um, <laughs> well, now when I see the name Yanni, I also think of my dog, who's named Yanni now. Oh. So, yeah. um, he's like a total wimp version of this Yanni. <laughs> uh, he's like tiny, he's not tiny, he's 40 pounds, but... Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, it's just, I've always been like a huge dog person. I mean, yeah. I talk about, like, not crying, but the movie Up and the dog almost makes me cry. Because <laughs> mm-hmm. it's a dog. Um, yeah. So, so, but anyway... Uh, yeah, I just love dogs in general and the fact, you know, I'm, I'm, it's, it's sort of a, it's a humbling and, and an experience that I haven't really sorted through in my brain entirely that, you know, an animal gives its life for you. Uh, it's just, Mm. it's different. I mean, Um, you said that, um, that, um, is it Hargis, um, picked up the pieces of Yanni? Yeah. As all this was going on. He, yeah, so we, like, when we were climbing up that thing, yeah. that, like, took a second, so, and he found, like, part of him. Is that, um, you know, of he, course. He immediately just grabbed it. it was yeah. Like, you know. Um, I mean, what's the, is, the psychology of that is that the dog is just as much of a, a part of the team as, as all the people? Yeah, that's right? how it's considered. You, you yeah. know that, you, uh, you know that, you know, he's not. You know, you know that if you have to choose, you're gonna th- you're gonna put a dog forward, um, but it hits it hits the guys hard when the dog gets taken out. I mean, yeah. Uh, and it's 
probably hit me harder on mission, harder than any of the deaths, because it, it hits you in a different way that you're not expecting, and then it also it's probably more digestible uh, than like your friend. That's a thing that you'll take a lifetime to figure out. Mm. Um, you know, and uh, and it's just you know it's different, it's something yeah. you don't expect, and and it's the what's I think there's a World War One memorial mm-hmm. there of horses. And mm-hmm. up for horses, and I think yeah. the inscription says something like they had no choice, because you know they don't. That's so. what I was going to ask. Is is part of it that you know, you know, wars are the result of things people do, and the, you know the dogs in it, but the dog didn't really have anything to do with it. You know right. Said. And I mean yeah. these dogs, you know, don't get me wrong. These dogs, they love their job. They're yeah, trained and bred sure. for it. They they're literally yeah. bred for it. They yeah. love doing it. So yeah. like. Yeah. Um, and every dog's different. Every each four deployments, I, had, I was with a different dog. Um, and mm-hmm. Yanni was great. Uh, the second deployment I had uh, was super awesome. You know, that dog. And, yeah. Um, but you know, it's it's still they're just dogs. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you know, what what you wrote attached to that picture you wrote that Yanni is the dog who took an ID for for me. That's yeah. Right. So there's the. I mean, sounds like there is a sense of. Um, Holding the memory of that dog dear. Yeah. In a different way than the Definitely. people that... Yeah, I know. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's the one that literally, like, died so that I didn't... And that Zach, my buddy, didn't, you know, and that Josh and, and uh, Dawson, like, I didn't. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, let's, let me... Um, here's a photo here that I found very powerful. Cody's sister at his funeral. Mm-hmm. Um, no, you. I don't think you were at this. No, you were not there. I couldn't, couldn't afford it. Yeah, but when you when you see this, you've got the photo there of Cody, and, and you've got the photo there of his sister. What goes through your mind there? Yeah, I and mean, that's just heartbreaking. I mean, you know, especially his sister is his, his parents. Um, you know, there's a lot of they they have a complicated family dynamic. Um, but they they you know a lot of people, especially newer rangers. They don't really understand, like, you know, Pat's dad was a retired special forces officer. Like, he, he gets it, you know, and his mom is, knows all the stuff that his dad's done, you know, for, for the most part. Sure. Uh, you know, it's it's equally heartbreaking, but it's in a different way because, you know, some people, they're just regular people. They're just regular families dealing with their family drama or whatever stuff that's, you know, and, you know, their only brother then is just, is just now gone forever. Yeah, you know, and only then do they really even learn about all these accomplishments that he's made, as yeah. far as how hard it was to get in the range of time. Because he didn't sure. talk about that stuff that much, I don't think. Yeah. Uh, you know, so. Well, it's a um, it's a it's a powerful photo. Yeah. Just a photo here of you and you and Patrick and a couple other guys there. Is it Disney World or? Yep. Disneyland. We this is like our group, us us here. This is us. We're all roommates. There's a fifth guy. But uh, we're all roommates, and we all live together. Uh, we all decided to pay out of pocket for a house instead of living in the barracks, and um, mm. you know, yeah. yeah. You and Patrick at Christmas time, you're dressed up as a cow. It looks like it's a dog, actually. A spotted oh, dog. A dog. Everybody oh. thinks it's a cow, <laughs> but it is a dog. And he's the guy yeah. from uh, oh, what's that kids' movie with the Where the Wild Things Are? Oh, and, uh, yeah. And we uh, yeah, we got Am- we got Amazon delivery at that that time. So really. <laughs> Now is this this picture here it says Patrick Hawkins and I awaiting helicopter to mission that's not to this this mission no, term that was here, a few before but yeah. you guys went on a bunch of missions together yeah then there's this photo here leaving deployment leaving deployment for early to escort four friendly KIA back home and those are the, the four that we've talked about so you were back there on the plane. So yeah, so I had the, the honor of, of taking Patrick. So you each 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 body is assigned a person. Uh, Cody, his his buddy, who's a really really good dude, who's a, a medic from another platoon. Uh, they grew up together. They they known each other since childhood. Mm-hmm. So uh, he got pulled from where he was at in Afghanistan, or he got asked. We all got asked, and we said you know yes. Um, for uh, Jenny, she had a. Um, uh, uh, fellow CST, really, really, um, really awesome woman uh, who I had never met until that here because they had trained separate. And, yeah. Um, yeah. But uh, she she escorted her, and then 
Joe, uh, the guy that he was with, couldn't leave because he he was like now he was he was working for one platoon now he's kind of working for two platoons. Um, so that was that was an experience to do that. To, yeah, to yeah. Escort being also an escort for that. Yeah. Um, well, um, just tell us what you were. Um, you know, on this flight home, I it's meant it's a long flight. Yeah, we had to yeah. stop somewhere halfway through. Okay. And then uh we could we had to stay there for a couple of days because uh one of them, you know, there was some notification problems with some of the families. So yeah. uh they couldn't we had to wait so they could meet us in Dover where we would come in. And I, uh yeah. And then I had to call Patrick's wife because somebody had told her that uh there was a mix up in all the names and stuff and she knew that he was dead, but I had to like, you know, you get that mind, idea in your mind that maybe it's not real, and I had to tell her that it was real. Um, so we had a couple of days in Germany for all that stuff to get sorted out, and then... Uh, you mean the, the denial thing, the family members were saying? No, well, most of them were, the part of the logistics was just hard to, they were, some of them were hard to reach. Oh, I see the family members, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah, hard to, they have to be properly notified, so... Yeah. How did you keep yourself occupied on that flight? I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> I just think a lot of thinking, I guess. Uh, um, mm. And how much time did you have left in the army? Months. Months. Yeah. I knew that when I got out off of my last deployment, had I stayed there for the full, full four months, I would have had like three or four months to get out. Um, yeah. I passed that. Yeah. So here's a here's a question I ask combat vets a lot, and you know we're getting close to being done here. Um, I asked Combat Vets this question. Um, if I had a, a magic potion, right, that I could give you, and after taking the potion, um, all of the good memories of your time in the service you would keep, but all of the bad memories you would lose, right? would you would you take the potion? No, definitely not. No, why not? That's, uh, I would be, you know, the greatest, one of the greatest honors in my life is knowing those people and experiencing those things with them. The guys that lived and the guys that died. Yeah. You know, the guys that you'll never hear their names in the news or anything, but the guys that lived and, and the ones that died, I think uh, that was one of the greatest honors of my life so far. Um, and yeah, I wouldn't trade that for anything. And I mean, except and, for having them back, I guess. But Right. I mean, so obviously you can't, you know, give up those memories but if you if you if you were able to do that and you did that that would kind of be a betrayal um, yeah I mean it's it's yeah. it's important I think to that like I mean that these ideas I mean that you know someone gives their life for something you know that's a pretty incredible statement yeah. you know and it's something that inspires me I think to push myself every day yeah um, you know and you, you have to be careful not to let it break you down you know yeah. I think but it can you know it's just it's like fire you know it can fuel you or it can burn you up it can do a whole mm. bunch of different stuff so mm -hmm. um, it's just up to you how you how you choose to use it and um, I mean that's the type of like I mean it's the most uh, quintessential version of service to give your life for something you know to give to give you know is really what service is so to give everything is is the you know ultimate form of service um, yeah. and you know you're doing it for not in a sense of like you know like military service in like a in like a you know sometimes people use words like that and, and it gets like you know you say a word over and over again and it starts to kind of lose its meaning it's like, it comes a cliche almost yeah exactly yeah. service in the sense in a very pure biblical kind of sense or very yeah. pure like you know uh you're just giving to, to the people that you care about and um, or the country that you care about uh, yeah. and you give you give a lot and sometimes you give everything you know um, and to me that's really important that uh, that we recognize that yeah and that part of yeah. what I want to be you know like a storyteller I mean that's that's a these are ideas that are so important for our society especially since we're so removed from the world uh, being way over here, over the oceans, and, and in our fairly comfortable, you know, existence for most of us, at least, yeah. um, like it's important that we remember that stuff, and we we operate day to day based off of like 
all these sacrifices that people have made for us. And, you know, I mean, Patrick didn't die so that I can, like, the guys who, you know, we were fighting with aren't, like, you know, they weren't, like, about to get on a plane and go blow up something and he died so that that place doesn't get blown up. It's, like, you know, it's more complicated than that. It's a huge, you know, effort against terrorism within Afghanistan uh, that can that can be a hotbed. One of the reasons why we don't just pull out is because it's not because uh, um, people don't talk about this a whole lot. It's because people, the uh, DOD is really worried about uh, things like it being a breeding ground for more stuff. Yeah. So, you know, um, and, and just yeah. just kind of being a part of that effort and, and giving your life to something greater than yourself. These are ideas that I think are important to keep alive and we have this idea in America that like just because something's bad, you shouldn't like it needs to go away. Mm-hmm. Like no, that's right. we need to fight, you know, bad things, but like you, know, you got to embrace and confront hardship, embrace yeah. and confront evil, embrace and confront like not embrace evil, but you know what I mean. Like confront it basic, and like I mean, yeah, basic, and yeah. accept that it's out there yeah. and um, yeah, and then heart heartbreaking stuff too. You know, you just gotta like. Those scars kind of make you who you are too. Um, yeah, they become yeah. a part of you. They and to, to shirk them would be to shirk kind of your who you are. Sure, uh, I hear you. Well, just to just to end up, then we will go back to that uh, that photo. We've got Cody and Patrick and and Jenny and Peter's first name. I was Joe. Joe. Yeah, Joe Joseph. Was Peter. Yeah. Of the four, Patrick was the was the one that. Uh, that I knew best. Yeah. That you knew best, and um, you know. So we honor them, and also I really appreciate you coming in and yeah, and spending this time talking with us. That's a lot. Yeah, I really appreciate it.